Stephen Colbert tries to have his uh, Mr. Deeds goes to Washington moment, and it's it's comical. The drama, the 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 passion, the hurt. This is the guy who lied early on about Charlottesville and claimed Donald Trump was talking about the tiki torch lighters, uh, uh, tiki torch protesters. He used that to propel himself to number one late night talk show host. He, he went on, he literally dragged down this drama that, that Trump was talking about the Tiki Torch protesters. He milked it for several shows. He milked it so successfully that on Tuesday, I think he started it Thursday the week before, uh, the, after Charlottesville, he milked it all the way till finally on a Tuesday, I think it was, the White House reporters asked him, do you want to retract your state, your, your basically your racist statements about Charlottesville? And Trump was like, what are you guys talking about? Because he hadn't done anything. <clears throat> and that lie propelled forward and forward, and it was even repeated in the last couple of weeks. So this guy standing here now, all self-righteous, was literally the ringleader of, of creating false false uh, memes about the president, false messaging, false racist messaging that he knew he was doing and refused to ever retract and neither did the news media. Trump never said there were good protesters on both sides in reference to the Tiki Torch protesters. He never said it. It was edited that way. And this guy was the ringleader. I watched it. And at the time, I thought he, I didn't realize he was lying. I only learned later. And the lie was so effective, I tried to post, when, a, when, a, when the truth was revealed, I tried to post it online, and the site that has like, 20, 000, has like 18,000 members actually took it down. They actually deleted it. Even though the guy totally explained what had really happened. So this guy did that. He's done that for the last three years, four years. Now he's all outraged. But here's the thing, <laughs> in the middle of his outrage, the one thing he will not talk about, the core issue, is that this is the first time we ever had an election where ballots were sent to every known address of a voter from a prior time. In the past, they were called absentee ballots. That means that you had to request a ballot so that you could vote from home. It was a process. This time around, everyone was sent the ballot. Now to try to make it ethical, they put barcodes on every, on every uh, ballot that was mailed out. So that was a good thing. But this has never been done before. So that doesn't mean that if, a, if, if you moved, if a person moved two or three times within a year and a ballot was sent to every address, and the ballot shows up to somebody else's, um, uh, uh, who's not living there, that they can't open it, look it over, fill it out, and even sign it with the person's name. And even if it gets flagged, which I don't even think they're checking all the signatures, even if the signature wasn't close enough, guess what? You can't prove that person did it. Because they could just say, I put it back in the mail. And then, it, I, that's it. And, they're, and they're, that's it. They're, they're not liable. So there are issues this time around. What they're doing is they've actually brainwashed, he's actually brainwashed himself into thinking that as long as every ballot that came in was counted, that's all that matters. And that's not all that matters. What also matters is you're gonna have to study patterns, right? They're saying in Georgia that 100,000 people who voted for Biden did not vote for the Democrat senator. But when you look on the Trump side, the claim is that only around a thousand people who voted for Trump didn't vote for the Republican senator. What a huge difference. That's a red flag. But that's not enough to prove anything. So what you would do is you would start looking at these final states, Pennsylvania, Georgia, North Carolina, um, and you would basically, and I can't think of the fourth at the moment, and you would analyze the votes, okay? And you would say, oh, okay, we see these patterns in these states where Biden gets a lot more votes than a senator, but when we look at all the other states, we don't see that pattern. That 
is would be suspicious. Okay, who would be against discovering that? Is this guy against this guy? He expects Trump to just accept the final result without having it analyzed. That is fascism. Remember, this is the first year where ballots were sent to everyone, whether they asked for for them or not. And it wasn't even like you have to come in person. You sent they sent all these ballots out, and then they could just be filled out and sent back in. So it's not like you send everyone a ballot, but it's only valid if you bring it in, or if you only bring it in to special locations. Okay, that wasn't done. So and and not and by special locations, I don't mean a ballot box. I'm talking about where there's verification that the person who's bringing it back either is the person who signed it or is somehow connected to that person, which I don't even know how that would work. So the oversimplification now is the opposite of how this guy would drill down on Trump throughout the last three and four, three, almost four years, how he would drill down against Trump and mislead people on anything related to Trump. And he never missed a chance to call him a racist. And he actually falsified information that he knew he falsified in Charlottesville to create the whole, help create the whole racism motif against Trump. This guy probably hardened two or three or four million voters totally against Trump that would never change their mind. And now he's going to look at the drama, look at this. He's going to literally put his head down and keep it there for like 20 seconds. Like, don't you all feel my pain? Isn't, all, isn't that all that matters? So we all knew he would do this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. What I didn't know is that sixteen seconds of dramatic pause. I didn't expect this to break my heart. You don't have a heart. For him to cast a dark shadow on our most sacred right. From the briefing room in the White House. Our house, not his. That is devastating. Charlottesville, this, baby. Charlottesville. For the same reason. Fraud. I didn't want him to get COVID. Certainly why I want him to survive. Because he is the president of the United States. Charlottesville, you fraud. Something, and that office should have some shred of decency. Now, we always knew he would leave a stain there. And not just from his butt bronzer. Because everything he did, everything, is now in some way presidential behavior, including this, unless, unless every single person rejects what he just did. And that means <laughs> for all the predictable behavior. Oh my God, what a narcissist. And the last four years. You know, I'm so ashamed right now, of this guy, I almost don't want to make the video. Republicans have to speak up. All of them. Oh, yeah. Tell us, King Steve. Because Tell us. For evil to succeed... You have to lie at Charlottesville like you did for four or five days and you profited from it. Do nothing. You became number one, dude. So say something you right sold now. your soul not later, not up with a lie. Up wind, you lied about you Charlottesville. I mean, that's not the only time right you lied about Trump. You lied about so Charlottesville. You only survived this up till now because a lot of voters didn't want to believe everything that was obvious to so many of us that Donald Trump is a fascist. And when it comes to democracy oh my versus God. fascism, I'm sorry, <laughs> there are not fine people on both sides. So you need to choose. See? Trump he just did it again! He just did it again! What a mo this is like a sociopath! He told you where the train is going, and it's not a passenger train. And he'll load you on it someday, too. He's just literally accusing him now, of, of a holocaust. Of good men. Oh my God. What about Mitch McConnell? Has he said anything? He's Dude. He declined to come. So, okay. Mitch McConnell have you ever seen him have office. somebody Mitch next McConnell to him when he talks, giving an opposing here. point of view during his monologue? Gives Never. So, Mitch, we heard you loud and clear. You're okay with this. 
No, I'm not it's okay not with you lying about ball. Charlottesville. This is you lied about Charlottesville and you profited from it. Your jobs. But I guess that's how you got your number one rating through fraudulent votes as well. And he's holding on to the Senate because of fraudulent elections in other states. Or Absentee the versus just sending elections. everybody a ballot, that's dude. That's, that's the issue. Saying Mitch McConnell. Because Americans are going to count something else starting right now. They're going to count who is willing to speak up against Donald Trump trying to kill democracy. Your so democracy, dude, where you lie about him repeatedly, this profit this from it, and then expect him to walk away. You stain the guy, dude. The thing that makes us most great, and it is time for you all to mean what your hacks have been yelling. But By you're way, still on the air, right. so we can't. If Joe Biden did pull the strings behind the scenes in Republican states like Arizona and Georgia while coordinating with Democratic states like Pennsylvania and Nevada and Wisconsin and Michigan and throwing in the red herring of letting the Republicans keep the Senate and gain a few seats in the House while just barely removing Donald Trump. <laughs> wow. I dude, mean, dude, you just exposed the issue. If there's a lot more votes for Biden than for the senator below him, that would be suspicious. So that right there, if you just had intelligent people around you to, to give you an opposing viewpoint, right now you could have totally redeemed all the idiocy you just said. You could have said, look, if you, we want to look at the final results and if we see really weird kind of voting, like 99% vote in precincts that were heavy Biden, maybe that's suspicious. Or maybe if, if uh, uh, we find that People voted for Biden and then didn't vote for the senator, and they did it in much bigger margin differences than for Trump. That might look suspicious. If we find that the difference in votes between, between Biden and the Democrat senator on that same ticket for that same state is vastly larger than Trump, but then when we shift away from the battleground states, we find that the difference isn't there to any, in any similar margin, then we got to wonder what's going on. But even if it actually was similar, that would be weird. So really, let's just drill down. Forget all the hyperbole, dude. You're inbred. You're an inbreed. Everyone you talk to thinks like you. Don't you get it? I mean, kudos to that level of interstate coordination. I mean, anyone who could accomplish that many things at once right now, really, would be. Well, actually, the center issues are in Democrat-controlled cities that waited till the last, till the end to vote. And guess what? They know how many votes they got to make up. So yeah, it looks a little suspicious. It does look a little suspicious. Whether it is or not, it looks suspicious. So calm down, dude. Calm down. If you want, everybody should look at the final vote totals and study them. Maybe the same pollsters who apparently screwed up big time uh, uh, in the last couple of months on all the numbers, maybe those same pollsters could redeem themselves, okay? Why don't we give them a chance? Why don't we make this about them and have them study the results down to the precinct level? Give them like a week or 10 days before you declare a winner and have them study the numbers because they may not get the polls right, but they might find actual anomalies in voting patterns. Okay? Like I said, if you get 99% votes in a precinct or, or, or in a city of all the registered voters, that might be a red flag. If you have... Um, a big discrepancy between people who voted for Biden and then didn't vote for the Democrat senator. And if those